making a complete fool out of both Goku and Vegeta, Frieza hires a cook and a waiter and then bails out on his spaceship. As for where he was heading, well, no one really had any idea. Meanwhile, Beerus has gone into a complete frenzy after casually wasting their entire supply of instant yakisoba. He's really in a bad mood now. Whis, on the other hand, is currently on his way back together with Goku and Vegeta so that they can make some instant yakisoba, but now there was nothing left whatsoever. Beerus contacts Whis. Listen, Whis, the yakisoba stock was stolen while I was asleep. I want you guys to go back to Earth and get some more. Also, get me some exclusively prepared premium grade yakisoba. I am genuinely angry. I mean, hungry. Whis would reply, What do you mean it was stolen? Who stole it? Beerus pauses and thinks for a second and then states, It was Frieza and his goons. Hearing this, Whis simply laughs and tells Goku and Vegeta that they need to take a little detour. Well, it looks like Lord Beerus royally screwed up one year's worth of yakisoba, so let's go. I, I want some pudding too. And just like that, they warp back to Earth. Of course, Beerus also got annoyed at how easily Whis was able to see through his lies as he goes on and says, damn you Whis, and don't forget to get my pudding as well. Subsequently, Goku asks Whis, well, what if it's true? Frieza does have a natural knack for just kind of annoying people. I doubt it, Whis replies. Frieza would never get on Lord Beerus' bad terms. He knows full well of the consequences. It's been this way for a significant period of time now. Whis, I'm not sure if you saw Black Frieza's power, Vegeta says, but is it possible that Frieza is now on the same level, if not stronger than Lord Beerus? Not at all, Whis replies. In fact, ever since Lord Beerus became the destroyer of Universe 7, he's yet to even use his full strength. But what do you think would happen if he were to actually use his full strength? I don't know, Goku says. We'll just have to get stronger and force him into using it. Wait, Whis, do you mean it's possible for Lord Beerus to get even stronger, Vegeta asks? Precisely, Whis states. If by chance anyone is able to force Lord Beerus into using 100% of his strength, it's not like that'll be the end. The only reason he doesn't just keep getting stronger is because he's yet to face someone who can push him that far. Meanwhile on planet Beerus, Beerus was actually having a migraine attack because of the sheer lack of good food and anger he had felt. He wonders if he should just go destroy a few planets to vent out his frustration, but that's when he senses a spaceship blitzing towards his planet. Ordinarily, he would have destroyed the ship considering the mood he was in as well, but his appetite could almost exclusively sense the undeniable fact that something delicious was on board that ship. That alone piqued his curiosity. Even though the ship in question was Frieza's from the looks of it, he lets it land peacefully on the planet. Beerus himself was sitting at a distance, glaring at the ship with his left eye, anticipating who could come out. The door opens and a waiter dressed as a butler comes out of the ship. That's right, it's Oil just casually strolling along Beerus' planet. But his anxiety stats were through the roof right now. By the point he exited the ship, he had already lost probably about 100 pounds and his hair had fallen out completely. Even so, he continues and walks straight up to Beerus. There, he presents him with an invitation. Lord Beerus, if you'd like, Sir Frieza has prepared an exquisite cuisine just for you. The food and table are already set. Please allow me to guide you there, Oil says, aging probably about two years just from standing in front of Beerus at this point. Hearing this, Beerus just shoves him aside and walks inside the ship all by himself. He didn't need any directions, he could smell where the food was. Within less than a minute, he had already found the dining table. Of course, Frieza was sitting across the table, but that was of no concern to him. As long as the food was good, Beerus was willing to let pretty much anything slide here. I'm glad you accepted our little invitation, Lord Beerus. I've gathered premium grade ingredients from several galaxies and my new cook has been working tirelessly to bring out the absolute best taste possible, Frieza affirms. Shut up and let me give it a taste. If it's not good enough, I will destroy you, Beerus replies. He wasn't expecting anything better than the yakisoba. All he had really wanted was something that would ease his appetite for the time being and let him calm his nerves. He sits down and takes a bite out of the dish that looked the most like yakisoba to him. The first bite wasn't really good, but then he took another bite and then another bite. With each bite, Beerus was getting more and more hungry for some reason. He finished this dish, 
the next one, and then everything else that was on the table. Frieza noticed that they'd need more food, and so he instantly called the half-dead Maki and told her to continue cooking. And yes, do not forget to add the usual ingredients, he tells her, before she heads back to the kitchen and tells the team to continue cooking. Hey Frieza, I wasn't really in the right state of mind when I started eating, but you better not be scheming something. Otherwise, well, you know what would happen, right? Beerus exclaims as he keeps shoving his mouth full. Oh, come on, Lord Beerus. We go back a long way, Frieza says. I just want to ask you for a little favor, and it's only natural to be polite when asking for a favor, right? I just thought you'd appreciate a pleasant meal more than anything else I could offer. A pleasant meal, you say? Beerus asks. 90% of what I ate were potent narcotics. Where did you even get these? Frieza just laughs. As expected, Lord Beerus, I can't sneak anything past you. If you are planning something, forget it. The worst this stuff can do is make me want to go to sleep, but even then, I can just expend extra energy to keep me awake for however long I want, Beerus states. Oh, don't be like that, Lord Beerus. What's so weird about me being nice, Frieza says. But a small talk was the last thing Beerus wanted at that moment, as he gets up and instantly destroys the interior of Frieza's spaceship. He was planning on destroying everything in his sight, but for some reason, Beerus was feeling a little off. It's definitely whatever Frieza added to his food. He then glares at Frieza and asks, ready to talk now? Unexpectedly, Frieza foresaw this coming, so he had already prepared another ship that would come pick him up on his signal, but he knew that bushing around too long may very well get his existence erased, and so he states the reason why he came here. I have just one question for you, Lord Beerus. How do I become the next destroyer? Don't tell me I'll have to take you down, he declares. Unlike a few moments ago, he was getting extra bold now. Oh, so that's what this is about. Just give it up, kid. I like this job and I'm not planning on a successor at the moment, Beerus replies. This is met with an entire minute-long silence from Frieza. He simply stands there, but then Frieza brings out the big guns. He transforms into Black Frieza almost as if a threat or a challenge to Beerus now. Well, what if I'm already stronger than you, Lord Beerus, he states. Impressive, but let me warn you, Frieza. Even if I'm half sleep, I can still destroy you several times over. I enjoyed the food, so leave. Or do you want me to erase you right here and now, Beerus declares. He was just as serious as he was sleepy. Calm down, Lord Beerus. I just want you to acknowledge my new transformation. Let's be honest, I have way more potential than those two Saiyan monkeys. How about you train me instead, Frieza asks. Forget it. The food wasn't nearly as good as what I get from Earth. Go and start making actual good food instead of relying on narcotics and I may consider it, Beerus replies. Well, have it your way. I'll have you acknowledge me even if I have to use force. In saying this, Frieza out of his mind blitzes straight towards Beerus without any reservations whatsoever as he knew that any half-assed approach would result in instant death. He tries to distract Beerus using his tail and then lands a high kick, but Beerus easily counters it with his elbow and sends Frieza flying with a blow to the stomach. This is what I tried to warn you of. When I'm sleepy, I can't control my power. You stand no chance, Frieza. Give it up and let me sleep, Beerus states. This is important, Lord Beerus. Tell me how I can become a destroyer. Once I have my hands on that Hakai energy, I'll be golden. I mean, well, whatever, Frieza says. I think I have a pretty good idea of what you're planning after becoming my successor. You'll wait for me to sleep and then kill my Supreme Kai, correct? Beerus says. Just like that, you'll become the new destroyer of Universe 7. The symbol of destruction and fear just as you always wanted, correct? Oh my, how shrewd of you, Lord Beerus. But my plan just doesn't end there, Frieza replies. I know I can still get stronger. Once I have a solid grasp on Hakai energy, I'll train myself half to death all day every day for a prolonged period of time. Eventually, I'll become a better destroyer and the higher authorities would have no choice but to fire you. Interesting. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad, but I'm curious. What is your plan after that, Beerus asks. What will you do once you become the next destroyer? Well, isn't that obvious? I'll become even stronger. Eventually, there would be no one stronger than me in the entire multiverse. I'll make that Grand Priest yield to me and become the next. But Frieza's sentence is cut off as he experiences a devastating punch landing in his stomach. But before he can regain his stability, Beerus grabs his throat and renders him incapable of moving. I grow tired of these schemes, Frieza. 
Goodbye. I doubt anyone would miss you, Beerus asserts, as he prepares to unleash an unavoidable Hakai blast. However, for some reason, Beerus was unable to conjure up the Hakai. Hey, what did you do? He asks Frieza. Frieza tries to speak, but Beerus is holding his throat way too tightly. He lightens the grip just to yawn, and Frieza uses that opportunity to explain what's going on. All of the food you ate had some of the most obscure particles I could find throughout the universe. Your energy gates are fundamentally blocked. You have no choice but to sleep. Otherwise, you won't be able to conjure up any kind of energy ever, Frieza declares. Oh, so that's what's going on. You are naive, Frieza. You don't understand a single thing about destructive power, Beerus states as he lets Frieza loose. Beerus then proceeds to knock all of his energy gates throughout the body from start to finish and all it took was about 30 seconds. Within that amount of time, Frieza had completely revised the flow of energy throughout his entire body. That is the essence of the technique of the destroyers. Well then Frieza, you annoying rat, you brought this upon yourself. Are you ready to experience absolute extermination, Beerus asserts, as he was already starting to conjure up that Hakai. Frieza can instinctively foresee his elimination as he starts to panic, and he decides that learning the technique of the destroyers isn't worth losing his existence over, so he wonders if he can use the distraction to bail on out of here. Fortunately, he gets the opportunity straight away. Whis, Goku, and Vegeta immediately pop up with a stupid amount of yakisoba and quite a lot of pudding on board too. And in that moment, Beerus averts his eyes to look at all that delicious food on board and Frieza simply takes this moment to disappear. Hey, wasn't that Frieza, Goku says? So he did steal your yakisoba. Wait, what happened? Why was Frieza here, Vegeta asks. Nah, it doesn't matter, Beerus says. Just let me get some of that pudding and get some sleep. Meanwhile, Frieza is seen on a nearby planet. He's barely escaped with his life this time, but he was ecstatic for some reason. Now that he had seen the mechanism of the technique in action, he was confident that with enough time, he'll be able to create his own variant of this destructive power. And Frieza had temporarily warped to a nearby planet thanks to his extraordinary speed, but his location was still within the realm of Beerus's range. The instant Beerus gets over his Yakisoba mood shift, he can instantly send a Hakai Blast all the way from there and completely end Frieza for good. Now obviously Frieza doesn't know about this, but he does understand the danger of staying close to Beerus and so he transmits across multiple galaxies and all the way back to a relatively secluded segment of Universe 7. On a planet that is still yet to be properly named, throughout the universe's history, this planet has always been called Planet X. Never has there been a race or species that ever managed to survive on this planet. But in case you were wondering on what happened to the Frieza Forest, or I guess the ones that tagged along to Beerus' planet, they simply bailed along with Oil and Maki the moment Frieza transformed. As for the ones stationed nearby, they were also told to go on and begin preparations for a cuisine somewhere else. Looks like Frieza is carefully planning everything here. He may be reckless, but he is no longer a prisoner to arrogance. Meanwhile, on Planet X, there was already someone waiting for Frieza. Oh, what's wrong, brother? Frieza asks. Just send me back to hell. This place is insane. I've never been sick my entire life, and yet, for the two weeks I've been on this planet, I've already puked an unfamiliar liquid not just once, but several times, Cooler says angrily. I know, all of my previous troops were wiped out because of this stupid planet, but I knew if anyone can survive, it's those of the same race as me, Frieza retorts. Yeah, well, I don't want to live anymore. Just kill me already, Cooler replies. I just want these stupid migraines to stop. Oh, seeing you in such a pathetic state only makes me happy, Frieza laughs. Just shut up and give me more of whatever that stuff was. I need this to stop, Cooler states. All right, off you go, Frieza says, as he throws something kind of fishy high in the sky. I swear, I'll kill you the moment I regain my composure, Cooler replies, as he jumps off into the sky to catch the stuff before it gets destroyed by the atmosphere. Meanwhile, on Planet Beerus. Uh, hey Lord Beerus, you still haven't told us about what Frieza was doing here. Goku continues to irritate Beerus until he finally talks, but Beerus is still occupied with yakisoba and pudding, so he keeps ignoring Goku. Meanwhile, Vegeta is engaging in mental gymnastics himself to try and connect the dots here. Just why was Frieza here? First, he got them both by using his new transformation, then he was on Planet Beerus. As you may expect, our Saiyan duo is just too puzzled by this recent turn of events. Whis was somewhat curious too, but not really. 
Probably because he's already done his research. Well, all right then, back to Planet X. Cooler continues to eat that fishy substance, whatever Frieza is giving him, and is finally back to his cool self once again. Listen, you lukewarm piece of junk. You need to get over these withdrawals. I was planning on immediately starting training for something, but you spoiled the mood. Like every single other time ever, Frieza states. Look, it's not my fault. I've been addicted to these since before you were even born. Blame our father for not hiding whatever this stuff is. In fact, it's your fault for taking it away from me for not just a day or two, but for two entire weeks. Of course I'm gonna have withdrawals, Cooler replies. Just shut the hell up. How will I ever topple the Grand Priest and those stupid twins if you don't man up? I'm serious here, Frieza reiterates. But inside, he is somewhat relieved to see that Cooler didn't fold. Even though he not only had to deal with the ridiculous conditions on the planet, but he also had to go without his usual food or drug of choice. That's right, his brother was recovering. The old Frieza would have gotten his brother even more hooked on that substance just to make sure he never steps out of line, but now he's able to look at the bigger picture and see which pieces are crucial to his plan. Cooler has never thought negatively of his addiction, but after training with Frieza, he realized that he can't engage in any prolonged battles and similarly, he is unable to experience the same level of exponential growth as Frieza. Every time he does, he always gets intense seizures along with diabolical migraine attacks. Frieza also wonders about Beerus as well. His kitchen staff added an insane amount of the same substance into the meal Beerus had and what if he starts craving more and comes after him as well? Hey, looks like we'll have to lay low for a few days, so don't make a big fuss about it. I don't have any more of that stuff, Frieza states. You don't have to tell me that. By this point, I can last an entire week without this thing, no problem. This planet, however, is still an issue. I don't think any of us would have survived if it weren't for our new transcended forms, Cooler replies, as he had already started to regain his composure. I know, but if we can learn to live effortlessly here, we'll be able to survive and thrive anywhere. That would be an ultimate use of our genetics, the ability to survive under any conditions possible, Frieza says. Damn it, Frieza, I had no idea you were such a nerd, Cooler Mox, but Frieza just blatantly stares back and says, hey, why didn't you name your new form Silver? Is it because Silver is inferior to Gold in Emox? Of course not, and Platinum is also a color. A nerd should know that, Cooler replies. Oh, shut up. My new form is stronger than your metallic shell anyways. Stop talking back and help me practice a new trick. Let's start. By the time we're done, my team would have already prepared an endless amount of actually healthy food, Frieza says. Well, mine is cooler. Anyways, cut straight to the point. Did you or did you get any ideas after invading good old Beerus's planet, Cooler asks. Hearing this, Frieza pauses for a second, looks straight into his eyes, and firmly states, Yes, I did. Cooler instantly gets into the zone and meets Frieza's eyes with similar intensity. It was on now. A major reason why he invaded Planet Beerus is to get some sort of information on the power of destruction. Now, using that information, these two will grow even stronger. For the next five days, Frieza starts mirroring the same type of mechanisms that Beerus used, but even though he can destroy things, it just doesn't feel the same. Cooler, on the other hand, is holding up a whole lot better even though they have consistently been engaging in high intensity duels on a planet this insane. We would then go and cut back to planet Beerus. The yakisoba and puddings are all gone now. Beerus is taking a sound nap and so is Goku, while Vegeta asks Whis about his thoughts on the whole Frieza situation. Well, I looked into it and he appears to be training with his brother it seems. I wonder how he revived him though, Whis replies. What? You mean Cooler has also been revived, Vegeta asks? Is he strong also now or what? Well, he's definitely not any stronger than current Frieza, Whis replies, but he seems to be at or around the same level as Frieza was during the Tournament of Power. His body seems somewhat unstable though, which has put a damper on his growth. Vegeta blacks out momentarily as it took him a minute before he could completely process all of this and before he could say anything. Beerus wakes up after seven consecutive days of rest as he says Whis, should I take care of them? Frieza made some bold statements when he was here, but the clown ran away the moment I took my eyes off of him. That's what I'm trying to ask, tell us what Frieza was here for, Goku asks again. He wakes up right after Beerus does. 
Birisama, when has there ever been a time when you eliminated someone just because they were a threat? Whis asks, and this question makes Beerus smirk. Hmm, <laughs> you're right. It doesn't matter how strong they are, I never need a reason to eliminate someone, and so if I have a reason, then that defeats the purpose. Let's ignore them for now, Goku and Vegeta should be able to handle them. I don't really care, Beerus says. Yeah, but tell me about the statements he made, Goku says, just never quite giving up when it comes to asking Beerus those questions. Shut up, I just don't want you idiots to get any weird ideas, Beerus replies. Wait, let's see. Is it because Frieza declared that he'll become the emperor of all 12 universes? That's something he'd say, Vegeta asks. Everyone goes silent for about 10 seconds, but then Goku breaks it by stating, Hey, Lord Beerus, does that mean, according to Frieza's statement at least, that it's possible to defeat Zeno and the Grand Priest? I want to fight them, Goku shamelessly declares. Though, of course, he gets kicked in the stomach immediately with just enough strength that he's barely able to keep conscious. Listen, you two, Beerus says angrily. I don't care what your intentions are. I don't want any of you to ever consider the idea of surpassing the Grand Priest or Zeno for that matter. I already don't have the best of relationships with the other destroyers, and if you keep crossing the line, not only are they going to alienate us, Lord Zeno may also have a sudden move flip, and we don't want that because that means an instant goodbye to everyone and everything you've ever known, including yourself. Got it? Wow, Lord Beerus, you really have put a lot of thought into this, haven't you? Goku replies. Yeah, and that's why from now on there is one rule that you absolutely must follow, he states. Do not, Beerus goes on, and I repeat, do not under any circumstances from now on get involved with anything outside of our universe. Not until you've at least surpassed us both, Beerus states. Surprisingly, this only further invigorates the ever lingering lust for growth within the hearts of these two Saiyans. But Lord Beerus, you do realize that Frieza used means from Universe 6 to not just grow stronger, but also revive his brother, we states. Okay, now that's a reason to put those two clowns in their place. If other universes get involved, we have no choice but to eliminate them. Let's go, Whis. We're heading out, Beerus replies. Damn, Whis, what are you, a stalker? You seriously know everything about what Frieza's doing. Also, don't just go off without us, Goku says, and Vegeta definitely backs him up here. Whis lets out a light chuckle and says, Well, it's true. Now that he has become this strong, he is a legitimate threat to the survival of this universe. If he crosses the line somewhere, the best case scenario would be light alienation from the other universes, but in the absolute worst case, that would spell the end of our universe, and I seriously don't want to miss out on any puddings. And just like that, Whis, Beerus, Goku, and Vegeta leap for Planet X to confront Cooler and Frieza. It's already been a week since Frieza returned to Planet X. Initially, he was planning on training continuously for five days in order to develop his own version of the Destroyer technique. But on the fifth day, something really interesting happened. All this time, they thought Cooler's destructive tendency to consume liquefied plasma is hindering him from further evolving. However, that may not have been the case after all. And it was only through Frieza's rigorous rehabilitation lessons that Cooler was able to look beyond his previous conceptions of strength and energy. Just then, for a measly moment of time, he felt his own existence vibe with the entirety of matter around him. He felt as though anything is possible. Literally anything. Even Frieza noticed his presence suddenly fading away into nothingness, but then reverting back to normal within the span of a single moment. Hey, Cooler, what was that? Have you finally gone insane from the withdrawals or something, Frieza immediately asked. However, Cooler just laughs. This is it, he replies. I don't know what it was, but with this, I will soon become even stronger than you, Frieza. It's only a matter of time. By the way, did you just call me by my name? Frieza shrugs and they go back to their training. He still had this stern look on his face, but in his heart, Frieza was grinning. It's not enough that Frieza himself gets stronger, he needs his brother to keep up as well or else they'll never be able to defeat Beerus, let alone Whis or the Grand Priest. Two days after this moment is when Beerus and the others set out and are on their way to Planet X. Whis is looking into the orb on his staff when he notices a strange irregularity. That's right, he noticed how the flow of matter came to an immediate standstill in the surroundings of Planet X for a fraction of a second. This was no joke. 
If there had been any normal life form on planet X, it would have instantly withered away in that moment. This is when Whis would stop and ask, say Lord Beerus, you can destroy matter from existence, but what would you say about stopping it? Does that make any sense? Goku is obviously confused and the same goes for Vegeta, but kind of in a different way. However, Beerus would go on to state, well, that's a silly question. What benefit is there in stopping matter? In what context are we even talking about? Does stopping time count as stopping matter? Does stopping all of the physical phenomena in the body also count? This doesn't make any sense, Whis. Whis would reply, I know, right? But it seems something similar happened at Planet X around two days ago, exactly where Frieza and his brother were supposed to be. Beerus asks, are they still there? And Whis tells them, yes. They've been there together for the past seven days, inadvertently hinting that it was indeed those two who caused such an irregularity. Cutting back to Planet X, Cooler is too exhausted to even be alive right now. Plus, he's also mad at Frieza because before the start of this training, Frieza stated that it only go on for five days, but since Frieza hasn't managed to get the hang of the destroyer technique yet, he refuses to take a break. In the past seven days, they hadn't eaten anything, they hadn't stopped either, even if it's cooler and Frieza, the savage atmosphere of this planet has definitely depleted all of their stamina at this point. Goodness, what the heck is wrong with you, Frieza? I've started getting those diabolical migraines again. Don't make me hurt you. Let's call it a week and go to that place where your goons have been preparing a cuisine for us. I'll also need more of that liquefied plasma to stop these withdrawals, Cooler says. Frieza was going to reply positively, but just then, he senses the presence of four individuals who will be stepping foot onto the planet any moment now. This infuriates Frieza. He knows exactly who they are. Damn it, and I was this close to greatness. Guess we'll just have to talk ourselves out of this, Frieza continues. Listen, Cooler, do not mess this up. All I want is for you to not say anything. I'll handle this. Sadly, Cooler is barely hanging on right now. He may very well finally lose it at any moment. Frieza, neither Cooler are in any shape to fight at this moment, so any mistake would mean the end of them. Ordinarily, Frieza would have never made such a massive miscalculation. However, the unknown perplexity of Planet X definitely influenced his cognitive capabilities. The jig was up. Beerus, Whis, Goku, and Vegeta are already here. Whoa, what's wrong with this place, Goku says. I feel like I'm gonna puke any second. I know, right, Vegeta replies. The steak I ate three weeks ago suddenly wants to come out. What's with this place? As expected, even they're having trouble here, but seeing their lax attitude, Frieza steps up and faces Beerus. Lord Beerus, what brings you here? I apologize for the last time. As you can see, my brother and I are in no shape to stand straight, let alone plot anything fishy, he says. Cut the nonsense, Frieza. You know exactly why I've come here, Beerus states. For the liquefied plasma, Frieza asks. Well, I definitely wouldn't mind that, but first, let me get something straight. What did you do when you were in Universe 6, Beer states? Well, to be fair, if I did anything illicit, you would have already heard about it by now, wouldn't you? But I guess you can say I was just searching for ways to bring Cooler back, Frieza honestly replies. Beerus knows that this isn't worth fussing over, but when he considers the potential danger of letting the current Frieza roam free without restrictions, he instantly recalls the words Frieza said when he invaded planet Beerus. Frieza. Tell me once again how high are you planning? What is your ambition? Depending on your answer, I'll have to get rid of you right now, Beerus asks calmly. Frieza knew what he said last time and he also knows that he can't really say the same things again, but his current pride doesn't allow him to lie and so he replies, Lord Beerus, I just want to get stronger than you through my own strength and once that is taken care of, I'll set my eyes on the next target. Aren't you being too paranoid right now? What's wrong with me getting stronger? And Goku intervenes, he's right Lord Beerus, even I want to go and fight the Grand Priest one day, stop being so serious. Beerus immediately punches and destroys Goku's face. Listen you fools, it's time you learn that some things are supposed to be impossible. Alright Frieza, I'll take you on, he says. But Lord Beerus, I'm in no shape to fight, are you seriously going to fight a half dead man, Frieza replies. He did have a point and so, Beerus asks Whis to heal them both. However, right when Whis was about to heal Cooler, Frieza unleashes a potent key blast on Cooler with the intention to kill. 
Ordinarily, Cooler wouldn't have been able to survive that, but since Whis was going to completely heal him in that next moment, Frieza would conveniently use this opportunity to further evolve his brother through a Zenkai boost from nearly dying before being completely healed by Whis. Looks like I took a page from your book, huh, Vegeta? Frieza laughs. This would take him off even further, and so Vegeta steps up next. Lord Beerus, let me handle this. Last time Frieza caught me off guard, but I won't let the same thing happen again. Cooler, on the other hand, looks at Goku and asks him if he'd like to exchange a few blows, and of course, Goku was all game. The battle would then begin. Lord Beerus, we states, I'm not sure about Goku, but Vegeta would, without question, lose against Frieza. I know, Frieza is indeed the strongest mortal in the universe right now. Even that Broly kid may not measure up, Beerus replies. And sure enough, while Vegeta's body was still trying to adapt to the conditions of this planet, Frieza had been to hell and back, literally. He continues to land one near-fatal blow after another, but Ultra Ego does intrigue him. Hey Vegeta, what's with this new form you've been using, he asks. Huh? Well, I guess you can say I learned it from Lord Beerus, Vegeta replies. Hearing this, Frieza sees the shiny earlobe on Vegeta and then notices the same kind on Beerus. This was a massive aha moment. He instantly warps in front of Vegeta and quite literally rips out his entire ear. I guess I'll take that. That's all Frieza had to say. Vegeta feels it right where it hurts, but bears it and steps on Frieza's tail. However, Frieza had already put on the earlobe. This is it. I had both the visualization and the energy mechanisms down, but the final piece seemed to be missing, although right now, Everything has fallen into place. I can finally fight Beerus on equal terms, Frieza declares. Shut your mouth, Frieza. I'll be the one who defeats you today, Vegeta says. The look in his eyes just keeps getting sharper and sharper. Meanwhile, Goku seems to be quite easily overpowering Platinum Cooler with his new form. He lands one heavy punch after another and Cooler can't really do anything but defend. Goku was also honestly getting tired of it, truth be told. He'd rather fight Frieza. That one is way more interesting, but just as he's about to land the final finishing blow, something in the air snaps. Right then, in that very moment, the same wander happens again. For a singular moment in time, Cooler becomes one with everything else and uses that totality to counter Goku. This results in an almost disgustingly brutal blow that leaves Goku in a state of temporary delirium. It was too abrupt. Goku simply didn't have the time, the understanding, or even the instinctual capacity to fully counter it. Whis and Beerus both observed what happened. Hey Whis, this is just like Ultra Instinct Omen, but in a slightly different way. How does it work? Beerus asks. Let's see. I'm not sure. I noticed something strange about Cooler's body earlier, but this instance confirms it. There are certain irregularities, for example, his flow of energy isn't just limited to his own body. He can also unconsciously become one with the surroundings and use them as his own body parts. Honestly, this makes no sense, but that's what it is, Whis replies. It doesn't have to make sense. My head feels like it'll explode any moment now. Everything has become so free. I can feel the universe. No. I am the universe, Cooler laughs, as a bright flash of light envelops the entire planet. Everything turns black and white, the same color as Cooler's newly acquired form. This time, it was intentional. Having gained his mental clarity back, Cooler finally found a way to leverage this uncanny ability. Well, since this is because of my liquefied plasma addiction, I'll go ahead and name this Plasma Cooler. No idea what that means, though Cooler laughs. And it wasn't only him who just experienced an insane boost in the power. Frieza was the same. The earlobe gave him the final piece of the puzzle and led him to unlocking his very own Ultra Ego technique. Thank you for showing me the ropes, Lord Beerus. And thank you too, Vegeta. I'd like to dedicate this evolution to you both. Behold, the strongest being in Universe 7. I feel like I can beat anyone right now. Literally anyone, Frieza declares. His vibe instantly sends a ripple throughout the multiverse. All of the other destroyers couldn't help but notice that something weird is going on in Universe 7. Even the Grand Priest is intrigued. But as for Beerus, the man's rage hit a record high. Beerus would go on to crack his neck as the look in his eyes sharpened profusely. Eh, well Whis, 
I guess it's time for me to reach the next level too. Otherwise, these clowns will continue to get big heads, Beers proclaims. Everything about him, however, reeked of rage, terror, and destruction at this point. This was it. It doesn't matter if you're a mortal, a destroyer, or an angel. The battle to decide the strongest being in Universe 7 would finally begin. The battle to decide the actual strongest being in Universe 7 officially begins. And as you could probably guess, Whis is just a spectator to all of this. So Beerus will begin by unleashing an extreme amount of rage and shakes the planet with an air of terror and destruction. This wasn't just some bad mood, he was genuinely pissed and all he could see in his eyes were lifeless bodies of both Frieza and Cooler. A truly pissed off Beerus is something that I've never seen and I don't know if we need to ever see that. So tell us Whis, just how strong exactly is Lord Beerus, Vegeta asked. He was not in a pleasant mood either, considering how Frieza just casually ripped off his ear. Now, that's a good question, Vegeta. Just know that the reason why Lord Beerus wasn't able to complete my training is not because of his incompetence. It's simply because he just doesn't care. Even I don't know the true depths of his power, Whis declares. Sure enough, Beerus immediately disappears from sight, reappears in a matter of a second, and kicks Frieza so hard he effectively levitates off the ground for a few before his body realizes he'd even been hit. Oh, come on now, Lord Beerus. Are you so sure about hitting me that hard? From what I know about Ultra Ego, this is only going to make me even stronger, Frieza asks. And? Beerus says as he grabs Frieza's tail and doesn't sling him around, he just snaps it off. Clean. Goku, Vegeta, even cooler. They're all left utterly speechless over what just happened. One instance, Frieza was still wiggling his tail in the air and the next moment, it's gone. All there is left in that spot is a blood sprinkler now. What follows is of course a painfully blood curdling scream by Frieza. So tell me Frieza, that must have hurt a lot. Are you still getting stronger Beerus states as he drops a low kick on Frieza's skull? Only this time Frieza just barely managed to block that. He wasn't going to just have the destroyer have a field day considering how much he had trained for this moment. Hey Cooler, looks like Lord Beerus plans on fighting us all alone. Come and give me a hand, Frieza asked, but Cooler wasn't listening to Frieza. Just what is this feeling? I feel invincible, Cooler declares. Oh yeah? Want to say that to my face, Beerus asks as he suddenly shows up behind Cooler and pats on his shoulder. Unfortunately, Cooler proceeds to make the worst mistake of his life. Pushes Beerus' hand off. The current Cooler is dripping with plasma and he can feel the presence of his surroundings, but what he doesn't know is that he has substantial misconceptions about the limits of his own abilities. He may have suddenly acquired the power to influence his surroundings, but it is going to take a million more years for him to actually be productive with it. Cooler focuses his energy on a singular point then unleashes it on Beerus. First, it compounds in size, grows more massive than the planet itself, but suddenly, it once again starts to contract before eventually returning to that singular point. Take this, you lazy cat. This little drop of energy can wipe out an entire galaxy, Cooler laughs. Whis laughs as well. As for Beerus, he simply opens his mouth and inhales what was gonna destroy an entire galaxy, right? Have you ever heard of Gamma Ray Burst? Beerus humbly asks. Cooler was still in utter shock at what just happened, but he decides to answer appropriately. I know it's like the strongest and brightest explosion in the entire universe. In fact, I heard that it takes a black hole to produce one, Cooler says. Something like that, but that usually just happens when I fart, Beerus affirms. When Cooler was born, he could have never dreamt of the day that these would be the last words he'll ever hear. Beerus would unleash a similar attack, but with actual destructive energy. It envelops Cooler and starts dissolving him into what appears to be a vortex. Frieza can only listen to his brother's screams as he slowly but surely fades away into nothingness. You, do you have any idea how much time I spent raising that idiot, Frieza snaps. Goku and Vegeta watch with anticipation as Frieza gets consumed with rage. It wasn't that he enjoyed the company of his brother, not even close. It's that he spent way too much effort in trying to help Cooler reach a level where he can actually help him conquer the multiverse. 
but all it's taking is one mad cat for his entire plan to crumble in real time. Frieza lets out a scream that sucks the living matter out of the planet underneath. Oh no, he might have actually gotten even stronger than Lord Beerus. Should we help him, Whis? Goku asks. No, just wait and watch, Whis replies. But Goku's assumptions were right on the money. He had already fought Beerus a couple of times, which is why the current extent of Frieza's energy actually made his instinct scream. It was even stronger. Seriously, even Broly wasn't that intense. What's with Frieza, Vegeta replies. Beerus looks around to properly gauge the dexterity of the situation. He's pondering how to counter Frieza's incoming rage. Well, well, well. Perhaps maybe it is finally time that we get to see what Lord Beerus has been hiding, we states. But this just further fumes Frieza's rage. He disrupts the flow of time around them and accelerates at a stupidly fast speed. And yet, during these nanoseconds, a certain sensation was overwhelming Frieza's senses. Back when he ripped off Vegeta's ear, he felt so good. But when his own tail was ripped off, that same euphoria didn't present itself. Beerus relaxes all of his muscles and prepares himself to counter Frieza's weight. Deep down, Beerus was still underestimating Frieza. Even if his eyes can see it, his own sense of self would immediately reject the fact that someone who was so far beneath him a moment ago could become so strong so quickly. Frieza's instincts catch on to that. You underestimate me at your own peril, you sleazy cat, Frieza laughs as he changes his form midair and grabs Beerus' incoming punch until, snap. Neither Goku nor Vegeta, not even Whis could believe what they'd just seen. Frieza wasn't playing at all. Right then, in that infinitely small period of time, he focused all of his might into completely crushing Beerus' elbow. And he did it. He crushed the man's arm, severed it even, and then used destruction to completely erase it from existence. The level of silence that followed this moment was overwhelming. Beerus was taken aback at first, but the pain he felt was very real. He uses his left hand to grab Frieza's neck. You absolute fool. Do you have any idea about what you've just done? How am I supposed to eat hamburgers from now on, Beerus expresses himself. He really liked that arm. Hey Whis, do you think I can get myself a new arm somehow, Beerus sincerely asks. I'm afraid not, Lord Beerus. The Grand Priest momentarily observed this battle. He wants this to serve as a reminder for you to never act carelessly ever again. He's currently forbidden me from restoring your arm. Although, he said that if you still want your arm, you can come to the Zeno Palace anytime, Whis answers calmly. Hey, Lord Beerus, don't just kill Frieza. I want to fight too, Goku shouts. Beerus replies, not with words, but with a menacing glare. Frieza coughs as he replies, I'm under no obligation to follow your orders. Today I took your arm, tomorrow your life. This is what happens when you cross the emperor of the universe, you sleazy cat. It's almost frightening how honest you are. Hey, Vegeta, come and finish him off, Beerus states as he finally lets go of Frieza's neck. I don't understand, why don't you just do that yourself, Lord Beerus, Vegeta says. Ah, uh, no buts, Beerus remarks as he instantly pops up, grabs Vegeta by the face and slams him into the ground. Well, you really are in a bad mood today, Lord Beerus, we states. Yeah, and I should have been more careful, Beerus replies. Then, as Vegeta vs. Frieza round 2 begins and only Frieza is enjoying it, Goku asks Beerus a genuine question. Say, Lord Beerus, back when I first fought you as a Super Saiyan God, how much of your power were you using? And then back during the battle royale with the other destroyers, were you holding back even then? But Beerus chooses not to reply and just continues to watch Vegeta getting washed by Ultra Frieza over there. Thankfully, Whis answers in his stead. Allow me to answer your questions, Goku. Do you ever feel rather sluggish when you wake up from a longer than usual nap? It was the same way with Lord Beerus. When he fought you, he still hadn't got over his morning blues yet. That's why he slapped Boma right back. Luckily, you managed to help him get rid of those blues. Then there was the battle royale with the other destroyers. Notice how when you start working out, it takes a few minutes to finally get into the element? It's called warming up. If the battle had continued on any longer and the other destroyers hadn't jumped him, you would have seen something far more sinister than anything that happened today. The Grand Priest didn't want to look for a new destroyer, which is why he stopped the battle royale about 5 minutes before things would have gotten really rowdy. 
Goku takes a moment to process all of this, and Whis continues. You see, Goku, destroyers can passively become stronger. It's impossible for anyone to beat them at their own game. Frieza simply chose the wrong pursuit of strength. He can't beat Lord Beerus with the technique of the destroyers. It is fundamentally impossible. Goku more or less understood what Whis meant by this, and deep down he also realized that he can't ever beat Whis just by pursuing a more nuanced understanding of Ultra Instinct. He has to go back to his Saiyan roots and once again evolve as a Saiyan. Just then, Vegeta comes flying all the way from up above and slams into Goku. Very impressive, Frieza. You still managed to subdue our Prince of All Saiyans even after all that happened. Very well, I suppose I'll now give you the courtesy of landing the final blow, Beerus states. Oh, shut up. I'll destroy you, you donkey, Frieza asserts. We sighs and Goku just laughs. While Beerus proceeds to create a void of indefinite terror and destruction and sends it upon Frieza. Frieza is instantly consumed by what seems to almost resemble dark matter, but that's not all. Now, enjoy drowning alive for all eternity. May your punishment serve as an example for the other wretched clowns of this multiverse, Beerus declares. That's right. It doesn't matter if Frieza tries or not, he can never leave this void. I swear I'll come back. I'll come back and I will destroy all of you. The monkeys, Beerus, Whis, or even the Grand Priest. The next time I'm out, no one will ever be able to disrespect me, Frieza states, before finally losing his voice as well. And those were his final words. Heal Vegeta, Whis, Beerus states. Let's drop these Saiyans off on their planet. I'm gonna have to take a nap for the time being. And Whis would do exactly that. Goku and Vegeta are healed up again and back on Earth while Whis and Beerus head back to their own planet. Damn it. Again, I wasn't the one who defeated Frieza, Vegeta says angrily. Yeah, but you now understand it too, don't you? For us to ever become stronger than Lord Beerus and Whis, we gotta find another way. Let's wish our tails back, Vegeta. I had an inspiration for a little something I want to try, Goku replies. Vegeta would cross his arms, grin, and just like that, these two Saiyans embark on their next quest for becoming even stronger. Meanwhile, just before Beerus falls asleep, he remarks to Whis, those two better have gotten a lot stronger by the next time I wake up, he says. Oh, I'm sure they will, Whis replies. Those two are always up to something. <laughs>